So today's lecture is about uh, one of Walter de Lamar's poems, Arabia. And as a poet, de Lamar, of course, we all know that he's a modern poet. And we have already discussed uh, some of the qualities of his poetry in uh, our explanation of his poem, The Listeners. So, of course, you can go back to that uh, video if you want to uh, go to many details about his style. But just a quick review would be useful here. Uh, actually, Walter de la Mer, be, even being a modern poet, uh, he's well known to be one of those poets who uh, have some kind of romantic qualities in his poetry. Uh, and I, I guess this is because he's considered one of the genteel poets. This is a kind of poetry that was um, one of the prominent kinds of poetry in the modern er uh, era. And uh, if we go through the features of this poetry, we will see that actually there are a number of subjects uh, that seem to be very traditional, romantic subjects. Uh, and these poets were mainly concerned with them. And what characterized this genteel kind of poetry is that they were all the time uh, avoiding uh, the prohibited subjects, things that could not be discussed publicly, uh, things that could uh, create kind of controversy in society, like for example, political or sexual uh, topics. They didn't speak about such things in their poetry. That's why it's called genteel. Actually, they were very soft, very uh, very gentle actually uh, if we use the same word in, uh, uh, in the topics and subjects they were dealing with in their poetry so here we are going to see one of these poems in which uh, the romantic qualities in de Lamar's poetry uh, are very uh, very clear and we can spot them and locate them easily Arabia and from the title actually uh, we can understand uh, maybe a lot of ideas and uh, things that would be in the poem itself. So Arabia is a place, geographically speaking, it is uh, what we know today as Saudi Arabia. I mean, the, the, this area of uh, desert, the peninsula, the Arabian Peninsula, uh, and of course we are, I, I'm, I'm an Arab, uh, I'm Iraqi and I'm an Arab, so I already know what, what kind of place this area is because it's very close to our geographically <clears throat> actually there is part of our country that uh, is connected in terms of I'm, I'm talking about the desert the, the desert environment is connected with Arabia so we already know what kind of environment in this place uh, the atmosphere uh, geographically what are the features in this place so Arabia, according to the but according to the poet actually who lives in the West, uh, Arabia was a place where they were able to know things or information about through the accounts of the people who visited this place. Uh, maybe the poet hasn't ever gone to Arabia. So uh, here the poet is going to to uh, to show us. Uh, let's say his own images or his own conception of Arabia and we are going to see how the romantic qualities is related to this description of uh, somewhere uh, that is far away and the, the speaker or the poet hasn't seen this place before <coughs> so if we start with the poem already we are going to see here uh, actually here this the, this is the poem the text and here some notes on the uh, on each stanza so let's see how does the speaker or the poet view arabia far are the shades of arabia where the princes ride at noon mid the verdurous veils and thickets under the ghost of the moon and so dark is that vaulted purple flowers in the forest rise and toss into blossom against the phantom stars pale in the noonday skies so in this first stanza, actually, we are going to see that the poet directly states the whole scene in Arabia. And from the very first word here, he says, far are the shades of Arabia. So we can understand here that the poet, first of all, he's not there. 
he is not describing the place according to his, uh, him being there and seeing things in real which leads us actually to conclude that maybe the speaker is dreaming this is a dream just a dream maybe he read about Arabia or maybe heard some accounts of Arabia <coughs> uh, and now he is imagining what does it look like or he's trying to visualize uh, the place in his mind but still he feels that it's a very far away place from him far are the shades of Arabia and here the word shades is really interesting because shades means that this place is filled with uh, maybe trees we can say um, mainly trees actually because how can you find a place or how can a place be f filled with shades there should be trees but in reality uh, what we know about Arabia is that it is a desert area actually there it is um, a rare possibility to find shades in Arabia but in the imagination of the poet in his own mind he imagines Arabia as a place filled with shades where the princes ride at noon and what about the people of Arabia he imagines them or uh, actually he, he didn't say normal people or he didn't mention uh, anybody he said princes so actually he is also imagining that the people here there uh, are from high class princes maybe kings okay and this is somehow kind of fairy tale um, equality in this poem mid the verdurous veils and thickets what do we find in arabia or what what are these things that he imagined or visualize in arabia veils and thickets and verdurous green actually <coughs> sorry uh, Arabia is, is very uh, the Arabian Peninsula in general actually it's a very wide area I mean we are talking about uh, uh, peninsula which is uh, spanning from let's say south which we find uh, Yemen and, and Oman and then uh, to the north uh, on the borders of <coughs> Iraq, Syria, and, and Jordan. Uh, if we come to reality, actually, just in the middle of Arabia, there is uh, this severe and harsh desert area on the on the uh, let's say on the, the, the sides of pen the Arabian Peninsula. Actually, there are green areas, especially the, the places that are uh, very close to the sea, the seashores, the coasts. Uh, the, the, the let's say the areas in which we have some maybe uh, high highlands like for example mountains uh, but mainly the, in the middle and there is this quarter the, the, the empty quarter that is very famous uh, it's actually all desert <coughs> but our speaker chooses to visualize Arabia as a place which is filled with beautiful landscape green areas and also uh, what kind of people the princes the kings he's imagining actually uh, uh, he's, he's imagining uh, things that are like fairy tales okay under the ghost of the moon so de la mars depicts arabia as far off fantasy it is more like a fantasy na than a real place as imagined by a dreamer okay and this is the quality of dreams having dreams in a poem this is some uh, very original romantic quality actually uh, the romantic poets uh, were uh, very much interested in uh, speaking about their dreams showing uh, their ideas through dreams because actually a dream is um, uh, or sorry a dream gives the poet this liberty this freedom to, to visualize things to speak about things not in the usual or realistic way they uh, look like so rather than as a relocation as viewed through the eyes of a tourist okay under the ghost of the moon and so dark is that vaulted purple actually the, the, the word ghost here is also interesting because it also establishes this kind of gothic 
atmosphere about Arabia and he's imagining Arabia not in the daylight but at night with the moon in the sky the princess riding uh, everything around is green and uh, there are shades so actually uh, he's, he's making us feel that Arabia is some very uh, magical place okay and so dark is that vaulted purple vaulted purple here also um, is related to the shape of buildings because we all know when we speak about this this area we are talking about um, Muslim uh, Muslim people and uh, around of course the the way the architecture is Islamic I mean what are the mosques what are the houses so there is this kind of shape vaults vaulted uh, it's very usual in the Islamic architecture and and this also gives us hint about um, the the regular or the let's say popular things that usually if you are a tourist and you go to this place uh, you can see uh, such things flowers in the forest rise so there are flowers there is a forest actually it's very strange description of Arabia which doesn't look like the reality of Arabia okay uh, there are flowers there are forests actually it looks like a jungle according to his description and toss into blossom against the phantom stars so we could imagine that actually it, the place is at night it's filled with green areas flowers trees and these flowers actually are uh, blossoming in, at, at night and we all know that flowers uh, sleep at night if you can call it sleeping I mean we all know that a lot of flowers a lot of kinds of flowers they don't appear in, in the uh, in the evening actually they sleep they go to sleep when the daylight comes they reopen again they blossom but here in Arabia it seems very imaginary and very magical that even at night flowers uh, are blossoming and uh, <clears throat> and when you look at them you see them uh, the, the, the landscape the scene is in front of you there are flowers and you can see them against the sky which is filled with stars this is a very magical and fan, fan, fantasy uh, to speak about uh, a place that is filled with uh, all these magical elements pale in the noonday skies so uh, on the contrary they are pale in the noon in the day daylight but they emerge to life uh, at night or in the evening so the poet's interest in a faraway place is a romantic quality in this f first stanza the poet is interested in visionary scenes actually till now he's only describing to us things that could be seen or visualized we were able now to imagine and to see things uh, in the eyes of the poet according to his visual descriptions if we come here sorry just let me read this note the flowers and forests are not realistic descriptions Arabia is known for its desert environment most of the impressions on the east were mainly inspired by the books such as the Arabian Nights actually we could, we could um, interpret this uh, strange or contrastive description of Arabia uh, which is contrastive to its reality to the impressions that were given about the East based on the writings of the Orientalists المستشرقين. the Orientalists those who uh, studied the, the, the East and wrote about it actually some people of the West were not able to go to the um, to the East and see things for themselves but they were depending on the readings of these uh, writings so their their Let's see, their conception about the East was not a realistic one. And one of these books is the Arabian Nights, Elf Layla wa Layla. Uh, which, if you have ever read this book or any stories, and maybe you have even uh, came across some movies or some um, cartoons that were made based on this book, it's very magical and, and it depends on fairy tales, fantasy, stories of the uh, spiritual 
creatures, jinnies, um, fairies. Uh, actually, the, 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 all the incidents and, and plots of the stories are out of this world. And this actually creates this impression for someone who hasn't gone to the East before. It creates this impression that actually the East is really like this, which is not actually. Sweet is the music of Arabia. Now we come to the second stanza. We are now you'll see that he will describe things that could be heard. Auditory images. Okay. What about the sounds in Arabia? Sweet is the music of Arabia. In my heart, when out of dreams, I still in the thin clear murk, clear murk of dawn, descry her gliding streams. Hear her strange lutes on the green banks, ring loud with grief and delight. Of the dim silk, dark-haired musicians in the brooding silence of night. So when it comes to the sounds of Arabia, how does he, or what does he uh, imagine? He remembers the music. And how did we know that he's remembering here? He says, in my heart. Actually, it is just a memory in his, in his, uh, in his heart. And everything about Arabia comes out of dreams. So, so he, he's saying here that sometimes I... As I am standing, and maybe he closes his eyes and starts to dream, daydreaming about Arabia. Okay? And he imagines that he's listening to the sounds, the music that comes from Arabia. And we all know that musical, uh, sorry, the, uh, the oriental music, there are some oriental instruments that are really famous in the, in the East. Uh, so he says, as I st stand there in the murk of the dawn and here he's referring to his own place, his country in the west he starts to imagine the sounds that come for example the sounds of the gliding streams, the rivers the sound of the water as it is gliding okay uh, hear, the, hear her strange lutes lutes are, of course here we are talking about uh, the oriental musical instrument, the lute, uh, it is a, an instrument with strings and it is very famous. Uh, I think it's something similar to al oud, al oud in, in uh, what we say in Arabic, we say al oud. On the green banks, still he insists on describing Arabia as a green area. Ring loud with grief and delight. So when he imagines or when he starts to uh, hear these sounds that come from Arabia, what kind of feeling it gives him? Grief and delight, sadness and happiness. And this is could be strange. I mean, uh, how can you have two contrastive feelings all together at the same time? And actually, this is the confusion that uh, the poet is speaking about when it comes to Arabia and the sounds and the music of Arabia. It gives him this mixture of feeling, this strange mixture of feelings, uh, grief and delight. Okay, uh, who are the musicians? Look at the description of the musicians. Dim silked, dark haired musicians. Dark haired, of course, because we are talking about people uh, of Arabia and the people in this area are dark haired dark skin, some, somehow their skin also is dark, not uh, white, dim silk, and what kind of clothes they are wearing, silk, and we all know that silk is really expensive, uh, and it comes from the east mainly, so uh, the, the, the way he imagines things is always, uh, as we see it here, is always influenced by this uh, conception of uh, not only fantasy, let's say also luxury, as if the people of Arabia are all luxurious. Princes, musicians uh, playing music and they are wearing silk. Okay, and also this is this could be uh, attributed to the Arabian Nights, this book, because it also, the characters it shows in this, the, the, uh, in this book, uh, 
most of the time they are people from high classes rich people also wearing these uh, fantasy luxurious clothes uh, so this also could be uh, possibly uh, because of the influence of the arabian nights in the brooding silence of night so arabia in the mind of the poet is a magical place and at the same time it is a place that he visits in his dreams all the time and he remembers uh, everything about it they haunt me they haunt me her lutes and her forests so the things that he mentioned in the first stanza and the, in the second stanza and in the, in the final one in the third one He's telling us, as, as if it is a conclusion, that I cannot get uh, the images of Arabia out of my mind. They haunt me. In Arabic, if we say it. Uh, and we all know that actually haunt, the word haunt, is usually used when we are talking about ghosts. Ghosts, when they are in a place, we say that this place is haunted. They visit, I mean, they come and go to this place. So it seems our speaker is feeling that uh, what comes of Arabia, the images that come of Arabia are like ghosts that haunt him all the time. He cannot get rid of them. No beauty on earth I see but shadowed with that dream recalls. Any beauty around uh, cannot match the beauty of Arabia in my in my mind yeah, I mean, he's, he's really impressed by the beauty of Arabia to the point that he cannot see any other beauty okay nothing on earth matches its beauty in his eyes uh, for him it, it has become the absolute okay her loveliness to me still eyes look coldly upon me cold voices whisper and say He's crazed with the spell of far Arabia. They have stolen his wits away. What about the attitude of people around him? <clears throat> uh, the poet actually seems very romantic, very taken away by the beauty of Arabia to the point that people uh, notice him, but they don't uh, understand him. They don't accept his situation. Uh, people around him coldly look at him and think he's insane this could be a reference to the materialistic nature of society in the modern age actually uh, modern society with all the changes that happened with all the uh, let's say radical ways of thinking uh, that started of course in the beginning of the modern age uh, such interest in such interest in let's say spirituality or beauty or all these qualities uh, doesn't seem to be normal actually people started to be more materialistic and such things would not pay off for them this interest uh, and this actually is bothering the poet and he thinks that this is a very cold attitude from uh, this society they st the still eyes uh, actually the way he describes them the still eyes and cold voices still eyes and cold voices uh, criticizing the poetic voice for being crazed with the spell of far arabia don't share its vision of beauty they cannot see what the poet is able to see they don't have the same uh, imagination about arabia and its beauty uh, people see only the realty before them incapable of recognizing the ideal that Dolamar embodies as Arabia actually the description looks like he's describing a very ideal place and the problem here is that people cannot recognize uh, what's ideal uh, what's spiritual what's beautiful anymore they cannot see things they only want to see realty just like what I have said in the beginning if you recall that I told you that Arabia is uh, geographically speaking is a desert area it's not uh, it's not filled with let's say beautiful, beautiful landscapes according to what we know about it and this could could be something very realistic and we shouldn't look at things all the time realistically 
imagination uh, could be a good thing it helps people to escape from the reality of their lives Arabia therefore is a statement of what poetry and the poetic mind is which is what a vision of an ideal okay it is uh, it gives us also this idea about how po poets all the time see things in an unusual way not like uh, ordinary people and here are some notes about the poem being a genteel poet Delamar avoids controversial subjects this is we mentioned this in the beginning in this poem a number of romantic elements could be traced <coughs> Actually, I think it's very easy to find what are these romantic elements. Uh, for example, longing to a faraway place, especially in the East. Actually, we know that already know that the romantic poets uh, have this in their poems. They have spoken about the East, about the Orient. They were interested in speaking about uh, somewhere that they haven't seen before. Images from nature. And I think it's very clear to spot the examples in the poem. Qualities of dreams. The poet is directly telling us that all the things he sees are uh, out of his dreams and they are, they are coming to him as dreams. Also the Gothic elements which is related to the uh, things that seems to be very supernatural, uh, out of this world, the descriptions of the phantom stars, the description of the ghost of the moon, um, uh, also the description of um, uh, let's say the music the sounds of Arabia so all these elements if if you are asked about the uh, qualities the mighty qualities in the poem you can spot these as examples it is hard to be longing to spirituality and to have the child mind because the child imagination persists and if powerful never perishes actually um, another quality of the romantic poetry is uh, depending on the imagination of a child sometimes you feel that the, the poets especially the romantic poets speak like children I mean the speaker seems to be a child not a grown-up not an adult and the reason for that is that they believe that child imagination is very pure clear and uh, a poet who is really successful and who knows how to uh, keep this poetic vision inside him is the one who originally was able to keep the child in, inside him, the child mind always to be able to think in the child's mind means that you are still uh, someone who has this kind of imagination and this kind of um, um, poetic ability inside you okay in this materialistic cold society the one with childish and imaginative mind is thought to be out of his right mind and this is actually what makes uh, the, the speaker or the poet feel isolated from society nobody actually understand this although being a modern poet de lamar manifests longing to traditional themes and forms of poetry this is due to nature of life in modern times where the search for meaning and spirituality prevails to escape the meaninglessness people in the modern society feel actually modern poets I this is what I think and believe all of them share this one feature that all of them are searching for meaning no matter how they speak about it how they show it and I you have already seen I have explained a lot of modern poets before uh, like uh, for example, William Butler Yeats, like um, uh, T.S. Eliot, um, uh, like Ezra Pound, and in all of them you find this quality of searching for meaning in a world which all the time insists on being meaningless. Okay, so this is in brief what uh, was the explanation of Arabia. I hope it was helpful. See you in next videos.